My name is Brendan Ritchie, and I am doing a little something I'm calling AI Focus. While in town, that town being Orlando, Florida, for the IT Nation Connect Global Conference, I'm catching up with a whole bunch of industry experts to talk about all things AI. You're going to learn about the tools they use and the coolest things they've done with them and where they think this AI revolution is going. Let's jump into it. Stretty, you work there. Yeah. What's your name? What do you do? Yeah, my name is Larry Garcia. I'm one of the co-founders of Stretty, and I do... Uh, janitorial services, uh, night school lawyering, and uh, occasionally some work with go-to-market. That's awesome. Also a great tool. We use it every day. Love it. Uh, there's my there's my plug for the bit for the for the company. Uh, all right. Um, obviously, a man who's very technically capable. You must be doing something really cool with AI. Tell me about your favorite tool and the coolest thing you've done with it. Uh, so two, I think generally I, I do love just being on the pro plan with ChatGPT and on the paid plan for cloud. I think super useful for updating things in a personal way, right? Can and, you and can, on that? Can you give me a different what's what's your take on the difference between the two? Like, what's the use case for one versus the other? Yeah, I think for for ChatGPT has been a little bit more Swiss Army knife, a little bit of everything. Cloud's been a little bit better as far as writing goes. I think in that research writing, uh, I think Cloud's been a little bit better. And like the call it the literature and fine arts. I'd go uh, Claude, and then if it's kind of all around encompassing data, all that, I go ChatGPT. How much of your time is spent in the fields of literature and fine arts? Quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit, man. I would tell you ten hours a week, probably. Maybe, maybe a little bit less than that. But you are not. learned, very yeah. learned. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe then, can maybe for both of those two tools, do you want to give me an, uh, the coolest thing you've done with either? Uh. Gosh, I no, I think a lot of them are not safe for work, but uh, but but I would I would say, well, going back to the in general purpose for for personal, that that's been pretty useful. I would say, plugging myself is we have AI inside of our application, so using it to build our quarterly goals has been awesome. So okay, okay, nice. Uh, all right, talk to me about this period generally. AI, hell of a lot of change, a lot of innovation, but also a lot of uncertainty. What do you like and and dislike about this period? You know, I think somebody told me the same thing about like the internet boom of the 2000s is if you were dropped off in 1997, like what would you do, right? And and let's say you just knew it wasn't going to really work out, but you knew, they, t they told you, hey, three of these hundred companies are really going to be massive in the future. But, you know, 97, like how would you approach things? You would not approach things. You would not get involved in the internet boom. Same thing with AI, meaning be versed in it. Know that some things is a little bit of, you know, vaporware and, you know, it's just people taking advantage of the term AI. But definitely be, you know, a little bit learned enough to just get ahead of 98% of the population. What's your what's your take on, uh, I'm just because you've got great chat, got to dig a little deeper here. What's your take on like the sort of bubble period? Do you think there's, there's too much excitement about AI or do you think it's actually all warranted and this is just the start in terms of those valuations, the uptake, the, the application? Yeah, I think it's, oh gosh, it's somewhere in between, right? Like, I, I don't think there's this big collapsing bubble, sort of like the internet period where only three companies survive. I think it'll be more than that. I just think that there's a lot of companies that are maybe getting really high valuations just on the AI term and don't really deliver anything. Nothing more than really a little bit more than an API call from OpenAI or Claude or one of these companies or Gemini. Um, but I think it's, it's right, if you told me 50 years from now, where are we? Like, everyone kind of knows where we are, right? Like, you're going to have either a Jarvis sort of Iron Man thing or something dystopian, but you don't want to think about that, right? Being a bit of chat about the Terminator today uh, yeah, in my conversation. So yes. <laughs> yep. So yeah, my, my, my bets is it's Jarvis, right? It's kind of the Iron Man. It's kind of everywhere, but it's, you know, you're making decisions and ultimately getting advice back from it and executing on something that you want to execute. I think that's where I will go. It's more of a Jarvis than Terminator. Okay. Yeah, when did you start straight? Uh, Straighty was actually embedded tool for our previous software company, um, 2018, 2019, but commercialized now in the EOS world uh, three years ago. So what would this have looked like with that AI coming into play? Like how much would it have slowed you down? How much different would the product look like? Uh, yeah, what, what impact has AI had? You know, it's really helped us with development, right? So, but then again, it's, you know, the... The, the one problem in AI today is the hallucinations, right? And the thing is that you have to know enough to know that it's lying. You know, imagine how many times you ask it something and it tells you something that you don't know. You're not, you don't know about something. You don't know if it's lying or not. So that's kind of a tough part. Yeah. So we've got great engineers that helps them, but we have great engineers that can tell, hey, when this code's not that really that great or it's going to cause another problem. But overall, you know, they tell me they run a lot more efficiently. So, I mean, I, I think we're 20, 30% further along than we could have without. That's huge. Go that's massive. Okay. I was actually waiting for someone to say that the thing that I hate most about this period is the M dashes, like on all of the output from ChatGPT. Like, great. But yeah, I mean, I just, it just says you're lazy. Uh, and hey, why do we need them? 
like they just a double hyphen, just not required. Uh, and if I see them in things my staff give me or people in the team, why the team give me, I'm like, you haven't even read this because you know I hate those. So if you if you had read it, you would have deleted them or changed them or find and replace. Anyway, old man rants. Big, t- big 10 find and replace. Yeah, like the old Microsoft word. It's like every time you see an M dash, change it to some anything else, a comma, anything, or a period, everything. a comma, yeah. anything else. Yeah. And then they read it, even though I put like a million customized, like, you know, uh, output style guide thing into my customization, if they still turn up. I, I just, I don't understand, like, it can do so much, but it can't get rid of those. I know, I know. I, anyway, that's my pointless rant and really not that big a problem, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. All right, thank you so much it for is, the chat. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you want to see more just like that from this series, you can find them on our LinkedIn company page or on our company YouTube page. I also just want to say a big thank you to the team at ConnectWise and IT Nation for having us involved.